And we're in Montreal for what has occurred here today, which is a meeting between all the provinces and territories, premiers and the prime minister. In the lead up to this meeting, there was a ton of talk about how much tension there would be in the room, particularly over the issue of a carbon tax and the federal government imposing a carbon tax on provinces like Ontario and Saskatchewan. In fact, there were even there was even speculation coming from the Ontario uh, government that Premier Ford would walk away from the meeting. That didn't happen in the end. He ended up walking out of the meeting saying it was a good meeting and that it was positive. There was good discussion, but he did have one bone of contention. Take a listen. So the goal is to hit the 30%. We all agree on that. I'm all for it. But all of a sudden, we had a little surprise in the room. The goalpost got changed. After everyone signed on to 30%, some will carry more water than other provinces. That, that sets uncertainty within our economy. We have a Approach that an approach that uh, recognize that Canada's targets are national targets. And uh, even though the Premier uh, may want to play games with uh, numbers, uh, what is clear is we are going to move forward, as we always have, in a very consistent way. And if anyone is moving the goalposts, uh, it's Premier Ford. The issue that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Ontario Premier Doug Ford are referring to, to there, the idea of these goalposts, is the targets that are set by each province and the federal government for a reduction in carbon emissions. The federal government is accusing the province of Ontario of reducing those targets unnecessarily, and the province says, what are you talking about? You're moving the goalposts. I had a chance to ask Intergovernmental Affairs Minister, the Federal Minister for Intergovernmental Affairs, Dominic LeBlanc, about this very issue. Take a listen to our conversation. Hi, Minister LeBlanc. Nice how, to see you again. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, Minister uh, Premier Ford, I should say, came out of the meeting today and said that your government is moving the goalposts for Ontario specifically when it comes to climate change targets. Is that true? That wasn't. I sat at the table for the entire discussion. That wouldn't have been a takeaway I took from the conversation. Um, That's not the, really a yes or a no, though. So no, we haven't moved the we haven't no. you, you, we are haven't the moved the goalposts. Targets changing for Ontario. No, the targets uh, and the commitments are the contained in the Pan Canadian framework, which was negotiated from the bottom up in 2016. Every government, all 13 governments, provincial and territorial government, the national government, made commitments. What's actually happened is Premier Ford has taken himself off the field, so he's now sitting in the stands looking at the goalposts and saying, "Geez, maybe maybe they've moved." What's happened is he moved himself off the field and into the stands by bailing out of the cap and trade system, by canceling a number of energy, efficient, energy efficiency uh, programs in Ontario. Um, he's contributing, frankly, to a broad national concern uh, that it's going to be harder to, uh, to reach these objectives. So, but he, uh, his government announced a climate plan that they say, and there are lots of details to be determined, but they say will get them to the Paris targets. Today he said that your government said that wasn't enough. Is that true? No, we've always said that the country has to reach the Paris targets, and every province made commitments that were negotiated in a thoughtful, uh, lengthy process. Uh, but if you evacuate some of the most effective measures, like putting a price on pollution, in the case of the cap and trade system that has worked very well in the province of Quebec, where it's we're sitting. It's not working that well in Quebec. They're short of their emissions targets. Well, they've, well, they're only a quarter of the way there. Yeah, but Premier Legault spoke quite compellingly about how uh, effective climate change measures and putting a price on pollution are part uh, of a broad economic Speaking strategy. Speaking effectively is one thing. Actually accomplishing what you've set out to do is another. Quebec yeah, but, is not meeting its targets I, at this but, point. But I don't share the pessimism that Quebec won't meet its char uh, targets. Quebec, Why not? Because Quebec has a very ambitious plan, for example, around electrification. They have a very abundant and impressive source of clean, green electrical energy that they want to, in fact, uh, make accessible to other Canadian jurisdictions and, and to the United States. Uh, that was, I thought, one of the very thoughtful parts of the conversation. Premier Legault and other premiers uh, spoke compellingly about how a national electrification project or uh, uh, resource corridors would offer, in fact, um, clean, green energy uh, to a number of jurisdictions that could then reduce their emissions. That would be good for Canada's overall reduction targets. Premier Notley wanted to talk about the oil price differential. She said there, that there was a conversation about it. She also said, though, that she walked away from this with nothing tangible. So no commitment from your government, for example, to step in and help out with the buy on rail. Uh, no commitment to you know hold, press the hold on C69. On rail, are you going to make a decision on that soon and when? 
So but on C69, on the uh, environmental assessment legislation, one thing I thought which was interesting in the discussion is a number of premiers uh, expressed a real concern about pushing hold or abandoning that legislation would leave us in the old 2012 Harper legislation, which in the same conversation they said takes too long to approve projects, is full of costs and contradictions. We have said to them that we think this legislation, one project, one assessment, one review, bring much tighter timelines and much more reliable timelines, but we've also said that if certain sectors in certain provinces have concerns, we uh, would encourage the Senate, where the legislation is now, to look thoughtfully at potential amendments. So it's not too late to improve the legislation and answer some of these uh, some of these concerns. Who, that was a very beyond, good part of the conversation. Who beyond Dwight Ball was in support of C69? Which other premiers? A number of premiers spoke because... More than just him? Uh, yes, because the, the choice is between passing our environmental assessment legislation, which we think modernizes and makes much more reliable and effective those approval processes, uh, and as I say, can it be improved during the Senate process? Uh, absolutely. If people have specific concerns, we would uh, encourage the Senate to look at them thoughtfully. Because you but know going there are back, concerns, but, big concerns from Alberta, from Saskatchewan, from the industry that this is the wrong time, even if the intent is, a, is an understandable, but, and this but, is the wrong time to throw a grenade in like that, well, according to them. But I would, well, for I, I, nobody used dramatic words like that. Those are your words, Vashi, that's fine. Um, I didn't hear anybody talk about grenades and throwing grenades in the meeting. Uh, Maybe not in the meeting, I, but, but they've come I, out many times. We've had many uh, of them on the show. Yeah, but, but okay, but then the choice is between that modern, effective legislation that, for example, the mining industry thinks would be a very significant improvement. That's the only or, industry that's going to support it. Or the failed Stephen Harper legislation of 2012, which got no pipelines approved to, to uh, new international markets, uh, which is a source of frustration in many jurisdictions around natural resource products. Um, we did have a very thoughtful discussion, however, led by Premier Notley at the very beginning of the meeting, but most First Ministers and the Prime Minister obviously participated actively in a discussion about how we can support the Alberta energy, the Alberta oil industry, uh, and the workers. Does that mean and a the decision on rail fine. is coming soon? We agreed, to work, uh, we agreed to work with the government of Alberta, but other governments as well. Premier Mo of Saskatchewan obviously shares that concern. The Premier of my province, the Premier of New Brunswick, obviously has ambitions for an energy uh, industry, uh, the premiers of Newfoundland and Labrador and Nova Scotia talked about offshore energy. Um, so there really was a desire to recognize how important the Alberta economy is to the whole country and people from across the country have benefited from that prosperity in Alberta and nobody minimizes for a minute the urgency of getting their resources to, to new markets uh, and also dealing with the sort of distressed barrel price that Premier Notley referred to. Um, because it's having ricochet effects across the country. If you're acknowledging that urgency, though, why won't you guys just make, why won't the federal government make a decision on whether or not to, uh, uh, you know, join in on this rail pitch that Premier Nali has made, to buy some of these rail well, cars? We, was, we said we would look at it with her, but it, it, uh, at, with the Alberta government. We're open to all kinds of suggestions. Uh, but, but nobody what will is give me an answer on when you'll decide. I don't well, know what's but the whole... Well, so, but, but this was a suggestion that came recently. Uh, Something as important, but something as important as the rail sector uh, in in the country. Many many industries across the country depend on a reliable rail sector. We've talked on this program about how the agricultural sector in Western Canada is so dependent, for example, on the rail sector. So uh, before the government of Canada would commit to spending a lot of taxpayers' money on something that may have unintended consequences in a sector. Uh, of the economy as important as rail. We want to understand what that means. So, uh, Is there a timeline then for making that decision? Do you expect in the to, next month, the, the next two months? The timeline is to continue the conversation. Premier Notley herself said this was a medium term solution. It's not an immediate solution. She but also she just also told said, me she wants an answer now. <laughs> well, of course she does. And we understand that. We understand that. And, and nobody said that we weren't interested in having that conversation with her. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Minister LeBlanc. Thanks, nice Bashi. Have, have a great weekend. Thank you, you too. <laughs> The provinces and territories premiers have just finished meeting with the Prime Minister. They also just finished addressing reporters. We're joined now by Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe. Hi, Premier Moe. Nice to see you in person. 
for once. So great to see you, Beth. Thanks for doing this. You came out and uh, sort of corroborated what Premier Ford was saying about the Prime Minister moving the goalposts on carbon emissions. Can you clarify what you mean by that? Well, let me first of all say there was good discussion with respect to uh, what we need to do and how we need to do better when it comes to emissions reductions uh, across the nation. Uh, the, the, where the discussion diverges is how do we actually get to those uh, to those targets? How do we get to our Paris Accord targets uh, here in the nation? Some feel uh, they, they can use a carbon tax and others, like myself, Premier Ford, uh, others in the nation don't think that's an effective mechanism uh, to get there. Although we have uh, mechanisms in place and plans in place that most certainly will. So so that's where the uh, the discussion diverges. There was some discussion with respect to um, some areas of the nation may be, may be required to do more, as uh, as some areas of the nation may not be able to uh, actually acquire that. You know, this is the diversity Canada has, and we had uh, we had just this this chat, and this goes takes us back to the Vancouver Declaration, where where provinces uh, committed to doing what they could to achieve uh, that 30 percent reduction for, for the country to achieve for the country, and and the provinces signed on to. Uh, add what they could or, or take action uh, where they could, um, understanding uh, the diversity of our nation, understanding that some areas have hydropower, some areas uh, do not. We in Saskatchewan uh, have had, you know, we have a 300 year supply of coal. We've invested in, in technology to clean that coal up and we're investing in changing how we generate our power. And we will, uh, we will achieve uh, our reductions in Saskatchewan, as other areas will as well. So it, there was some discussion about moving the goalposts, which was new to me, and uh, and and I, and I didn't I didn't care for it that. To, much. to be fair, though, isn't the federal government just saying that when Kathleen Wynne was in power, for example, there was a plan that was put in place that would get the country. The idea is to get the country to those Paris targets. So because Premier Ford has reduced the target in Ontario from what Kathleen Wynne had. Essentially, he him, he is moving the goal. No, I don't think so. I don't think uh, Premier Ford has reduced uh, the targets uh, on behalf of Ontarians. He's, but he he's has. Changed. There, the emissions are going to be no, not no. caught by as much no, as no. under Kathleen Wynne, no, at least target-wise. No, no, he's changed. He's changed how he's going to do that. He's still committed to working with his heavy emitters in the province of Ontario and ensuring that they are. But he's only going to reduce them by 30 percent, which is the Paris target. Kathleen Wynne was going to reduce them and just targets. Nobody says they're going to meet right. them, but by 37 percent. Right. And, and yeah, and then that is, uh, you, you know, I, I would I would put forward this. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, is, is the discussion in the room was that everyone needs to do better by, by you know, where, wherever their emissions are coming from. Saskatchewan's in on that conversation. Uh, uh, Premier Ford in Ontario was most certainly in on that conversation. So the, the where the discussion diverges is how are we going to get there? Um, but the, the matter that whether or not we get there and when we get there, uh, Everyone was in agreement on that. Coming out of the meeting, you also said that the you felt like the federal government made some specific, uh, or, you know, or, or sort of made specific comments about Bill, bill C sixty nine, right. and that is the bill for our viewers that is in the Senate right now. It's a yeah. big piece of legislation the federal government has introduced to essentially overhaul the way in which big resource projects like a pipeline can get approved or rejected. What exactly did you understand the federal government agreed to in this meeting on C sixty nine? For the sake of pipeline construction, to ensure. Uh, any construction, essentially, of uh, whether it's uh, hydropower, whether it's uh, um, hi um, transmission lines to move uh, hydropower around, or whether it's pipeline construction, they all require uh, regulatory certainty. Um, Bill C-69 in its current form does not provide that. There is a number of amendments that have come from industry. Uh, Saskatchewan, Alberta, other provinces have put forward amendments that have not been included as of yet, uh, which is uh, why I, I was concerned coming into this meeting. Um, the fact of the matter is, is we had some commitments by the Prime Minister, by Minister McKenna, that, that they will work with the provinces uh, uh, to, towards that certainty. And, uh, you know, we look forward to doing just that. We'll have our Minister of Energy and Resources coming out to Ottawa in, new, in the new year to ensure that she can communicate and articulate precisely what we need to see in that bill so that we can provide the certainty and, and add value to our products on behalf of all Canadians, whatever those products may be. In, in, in Saskatchewan, we have done a $20 billion dollar uh, investment in our potash industry. The private industry has done that investment. I'm not certain that would have occurred under Bill C-69. And to why is that important when you bring it back to the sustainability conversation? Uh, Saskatchewan potash production is among the 70th percentile when it comes to carbon emissions when you compare them with their competitors around the world. That's a good investment. That's a sustainable investment. This is what Canada brings to the table. I just want to make sure I understand correctly though because we had Minister Ayer on the show and right. she was saying 
Amendments aren't the way to go. Just kill mm -hmm. kill this yep. bill. And we've heard that from Alberta's Minister of Energy, too. Are you saying that you are open to the idea that the bill still go forward as long as the amendments satisfy your province's concerns? They satisfy our concerns. There will be a number of amendments, and we've articulated those to the minister as well as the, the parliamentary committee without response, I might add. Um, today we, got a, we had a response, a commitment to work together uh, to, to ensure that uh, Saskatchewan's concerns would be taken into account with the legislative and regulatory framework as we move forward and we look we look forward to uh, the federal government uh, doing just that can you specify what your a couple of your top concerns are and I asked because sources from the Prime Minister's office who were listening to the meeting were saying that they were the Prime Minister was asking for what do you want to change in this bill and the answers were not plentiful no there's a number of answers and they've been provided in writing they were provided again to the Minister of Environment with respect to who has standing when it comes to uh, uh, providing concerns or input on any particular project as opposed to a broad broader policy consultation uh, process. Uh, so who has standing, who would actually be affected and can they, uh, can they have uh, you know, input as to, towards uh, whether a project goes ahead or not? Um, and by who has standing, how does that affect the timelines of, uh, of an approval for a project or, or not of an approval? They say that uh, this will offer certainty, it's going to be two years, that's the, that's the timeline. It can if they make some amendments to who has standing uh, to provide input and, and, and Does that keep mean that you want certain groups excluded from who has standing? Like, and what groups would those Those that are impacted should have standing. And, and how do you define that? Those that are directly impacted by, by a project should have standing. Those that want to have an input on a policy um, which should be from a broader group. Those that want to have input on a specific project uh, should be directly impacted uh, by that specific project. The broader policy discussion uh, should not be uh, rehashed on each and every single project that comes forward. In addition to that, we, we, we hear conversations around one project, uh, one, one environmental impact assessment. Um, we've been like that for a number of years uh, uh, in Saskatchewan, as I said, with the potash expansion that we've had. And we need to ensure that that remains the case and there's some provincial autonomy in this shared environment space. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Premier Mo. So Appreciate it. Nice talking to you. Pleasure's all mine.